Staples. What's happening? So, Nas, The Lost Tapes 2 is finally dropped. This has probably been my most anticipated album of the year thus far. So, without no further ado, let's get into this, this review of this album. Nas, the brother finally has dropped a project, full length, 16 songs, one hour runtime. Let's get it. Track number one, No Bad Energy. It starts off epically. Irish church, choir type esque beat. Talk about how rappers be talking about their shit, but they ain't really bought what they be talking about. He talking about like uh the shit that he been through in his life and stuff. Like he going in, it starts off, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, oh, that nigga dies coming with it. It starts off, love this track. I'm like, this shit gonna be a classic. And then, then, uh, uh. <laughs> number two, Vernon Family. Not crazy about the beat. That's a, a big uh, thing about this project. Like a lot of the beats, I'm not really like, eh, like too crazy about them. That's a theme of it. It sounds more like some Diddy, Mary J. Blige type shit. Uh, I like what he was talking about. I like he had a line on there talk about if he would have been uh with the Juice Crew. Back in the days, they would have won. Like, whenever they was battling and shit. I think he talking about when they was, uh... I could be wrong. I want to say whenever Homeboy was going against KRS-One and shit. I guess when KRS-One uh, did, uh... The bridge is over. The bridge is over. I could be wrong. I, I, I'm from Louisiana. But I'm trying to go through my hip-hop uh, catalog and stuff. And I'm thinking that's what he's talking about. Uh, number three. Jerome of Rap. He put this out... Uh, a little minute ago, like, Joe Button then was killing it. Like, a lot of people was like, man, uh, this shit is trash. Like, that beat is crazy as shit. But just the fact that he rolled that beat, like, it's da 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 The beat is retarded. But he rolled that motherfucker. I'm like, I'm like, man, that nigga rapped on that shit. I'm like, that shit is impressive. For him to rap on that crazy ass fucking beat. But the beat is crazy as shit. So it's something, if you will play... Somebody that's not not a Nas fan, and you would be like, oh, you, I'm going to put you on something. And you play that, they're going to be like, man, turn that bullshit off. So it's it's impressive that he rapped on it, but just the sonically is not. Uh. Number four, Law Freestyle. Chill track. He snap on this one. This is a track that I love. Number five, Tanasia. Classic Nas joint. This go back to like his early shit. Like, he always got them joints back in the days, back in his old albums, where he telling the story about this woman and shit that's going down and stuff. But then with this one, he starts talking about, like, the beginning of man and shit. He's talking about, like, man comes from Asian shit. And he's talking about Tanasia. And he starts going in all kinds. I'm pretty sure it's deeper stuff, but I have to, like, really dive in and really break down every lyric and stuff. I don't do that on my reviews. Uh... Number six, Royalty featuring Ravon. Uh, she's on this album a lot. I'm not crazy about her voice on a lot of the stuff. It's a positive joint. It reminds me of, I know I can be what I want to be. It reminds me of that. Uh, uh, but the thing about it, it's, it's too bubbly. It's, it's too bubbly of a track, man. It's positive track, but... Uh, it's just too bubbly of a sound. Like it's it's like cartoonish or something. Uh, number seven. Who are you featuring? David Rainier. Chill track. It got a Barry White type vibe to it. Like like as far as the beat. Uh, he snap on this one, man. The David dude sounds good. I like that second verse. Like how he he starts that second verse off and he, and he starts naming like uh like how he like uh Muhammad Ali and a lot of uh historical black figures and. And stuff like that. The only thing it seemed it seemed like uh no, it's not this track. I'm thinking of another track. But the second verse, I like the first verse he snapped too, but the second verse I like how he, he started off. He got a little third verse, but it's only like maybe four bars or something. So this is one of the joints I really like too. Number eight, adult film featuring Swiss beats. What's so crazy about the beat at first? The beat come on like it's very fast tempo, but then I like the piano hits, and then once you start listening to it. It sounds like a like a tribal vibe to it. 
and uh, Swiss is on here. Like you expect, like Swiss, hey, hey, be up there screaming and shit. But he got like a chill kind of hook on here. I'm I'm not super crazy about it, but I thought I would like hate the track from when it started off. But by the end of the song, I was kind of feeling. Uh, number nine, War Against Love, chill shit, man. This one was what he dropping knowledge, like he dropping knowledge on the only way Nas can, like uh, like Nas and Lupe. Is two cats whenever they get in their bag, and I'm like, wow. Like some people you can listen to, and I'm like, I'm like, I could rap like that, or I can, I know as much as they do or something. But like Nas, Lupe, and like when Hove on his shit, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> uh, number ten, the art of it, featuring Jay Myers, sound like some old pimp type shit, like that beat. And basically, he just talking this shit, man. Poking his chest out on this joint right here. Number 11. Highly favorite. Has an old school jazz feel to it. It didn't really grab me. Like, the, the track is, is alright. But it wasn't like something I'm super, like, crazy about. So, it's like, uh, -huh. uh Number 12. Queen's Wolf. This one, <laughs> this one is weird. Because he kind of, like, telling the stories about when he was younger... Being in Queens and how he was running these streets and stuff. But then he starts talking like, like you're thinking metaphor and stuff. But he could start talking about, yeah, I was in these streets and I start transforming. And I'm fucking with these bitches and they got to shoot me with a silver bullet to kill me and stuff. Like he start really like talking about a bunch of werewolf shit. So it's kind of awkward. But like, what he's saying like as far as like him growing up and him in Queensbridge. Like that part is dope. But then the werewolf part is kind of like weird. So it's like, eh. Uh, number 13, It Never Ends. Piano Loop has a 70s kind of feel to it. He mentions Biggie a lot on here. He shows love to the brother. Uh, where I'm at. But then he talk about how people people don't appreciate you in the hood. Like, you can you can do your thing, but they ain't going to show you, show you no love, man. It's, it's an anomaly for the hood to show you love and stuff. So, I really like, the, like this joint right here. I like the things that, that he's saying on here. Uh, the only thing is, is like... This this was the track I was talking about earlier, what I was thinking, but it was this track. The only thing about it is like he got like three verses, but all of them are pretty short. It's like eight bars, maybe twelve bars at the most. But it's some short verses. If it was longer verses, some sixteens or something, it would have been way better track. It's just the the verses he was spitting, but they was just short. Uh number 14, you mean the world to me. Really like this one. But the way the sample comes in at the in the middle. Like, it's very awkward. Like, he be spitting, and it sounds good. But then the sample comes on, it's like it's like a repeat. Like a sample, and the dude is, is a, you mean the world to me, or whatever, whatever it says. But it, it goes like that for, man, like, like 20-something bars, man. And, like, Nas be trying to, like, spit the hook over the sample in the background, and it's too jumbled up. So that, that ruins the track. Number 15, Queensbridge Politics. Love this track right here, man. Uh, soon as the beat dropped, I was like, I was like, I, I love this one. This one had that old New York feel, that boom bap with that dark piano. Uh, the perfect canvas for for Nas to paint on, man. He tell the story of Queens Bridge pretty pretty much, man. He talk about a lot of people like like Jungle and uh, I want to say like Juice Crew and. All kind of shit. I could be wrong. He, he, he talk about some crews and shit. I'm, I just say Juice Crew, but I don't know if it was Juice Crew. But but he's saying, uh, some, oh, he talk about Havoc in them and shit. Like, he talk about a lot of people. It's, it's very dope. Very dope track. Number 16, Beautiful Life featuring Ray Vaughan. Not super crazy about the beat, but when he starts spitting and the shit that he talking about, man, he talking about like, uh, like the problems in his life, but divorce and the alimony and and the child supporting all these bills and stuff, and how his uh, his spouses don't wanna, well his ex spouse don't wanna let him see his son and all that, and she was mad, but then he happy for her that she 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 uh married again or whatever, and uh, but she mad that the judge let him see his son and stuff like like why are you mad like let me let me kick it with my son and stuff you want this money and shit like that, and then uh he mentions like his first first uh baby mama and stuff, how she wrote a book and she aired out the dirty laundry and people thought that was what the beef with Hove was about and stuff 
and he says that's not really what the beef was about. He says a lot on this track, man. So you listen up. He says a lot, man. Is is dope. But uh, overall, overall, man, the production killed the project. Like the a lot of the production was pretty was uh, borderline. I was gonna say whack, not necessarily whack, but borderline, man. A lot of the production wasn't the greatest in the world. Like uh. Mm, I give this, I give this like a 7.5. Like the lyricism and stuff, he goes in a lot. And Nas, Nas is one of the best MCs that ever graced the mic. But a lot of the production was just lackluster and stuff. This is something I'm, I will be jamming. It probably will make my top 10 list. Just because it's Nas. This, this is Nas, man. But heavy is the head that wears the crown. So look. Somebody can, Anderson Silva can go and we used to seeing you knocking people the fuck out in the first round and stuff. Front kicks and all kind of stuff. We see you go in there and you pitter pattering and getting bust up and you win barely in a five round fight and it's a boring kind of fight or whatever. Yeah, you won, but we want to... We know you better than that. We want to see, we want to see you tear up. Like we watch Bones Jones. We want to see Bones Jones. You spinning, give an elbow and shit, and knock the fuck out of somebody. We don't want to see you just <laughs> poking them in the eyes and pushing them away and stuff. So that's how this is, man. It's like the production killed his effort, man. Like I don't know. It's like MJ getting on the court with some penny loafers, man. Ah. But that's my thoughts on it, man. Happy that y'all y'all are watching these videos and stuff, man. The page is growing. Y'all seem to like the, the music reviews and stuff. I I figured y'all going to watch this one. This is Nas, of course. But like, comment, subscribe. Going to be the greatest of the most hated, man. New subscribers, fuck with y'all. Old subscribers, man. Much love to y'all. Peace out.